And hello again everyone, and welcome back to Siberia. Now, if you last remember, our intrepid heroine here, Kate Walker, has found herself in the town of Valadolin, France, where she is a, supposedly negotiating the sale of the Vorlberg Automaton Factory to the Universal Toy Company. However, upon getting here, she has discovered that Anna Vorlberg, the owner of the factory, has died, and unexpectedly, Anna's brother Hans, who everyone thought was dead, is actually alive and living somewhere in Siberia. And she now has to find out where Hans is so that she can get his signature on the paperwork and get back to New York with the approved sale. And along the way, she has to deal with the fact that her fiancé, Dan, is mad at her because she won't be with him when they go see the Goldbergs tomorrow night or something. But enough of that right now. Uh, Anna has... or not Anna. Um, Kate has just found a cave that had some cave paintings of mammoths in it and a mammoth toy. This is the toy that apparently um, Hans Vorlberg was trying to get to when he fell and had his accident, the one that led everyone to think that he is dead. And basically she has to figure out how to find Hans Vorlberg, and this is the first step along the way. Um, okay. The Vorlberg factory is over here. We're going to need to go there eventually, but we don't need to do it right now. In fact, I'm going to go take care of some stuff on the other end of town first. So let's head up this way. That's our hotel. There's no need to go back to that quite yet. And right here, there's a, another townsperson standing right here. Um, he won't tell us anything more than what we already know. And this is one of the scenes where the game kind of confused me. You see, we literally just reversed camera angles. There's that same guy again. It took me a little bit to realize that I was looking at the same scene from the other direction. That was kind of a confusing thing to me. Anyway, we're heading up to the church we saw at the beginning of the game. If you remember where that automaton funeral was going, this is the church it was heading towards. And they closed the gate, but it's open now. I guess the funeral's open. One of the things about this game is, I know... Wait, we have to answer the phone. Hello. Kate, so what's new? We've got a problem, Mr. Marson. What problem? Come on, Kate, don't beat around the bush. There's maybe an heir. What? Hans, Anna Varlberg's brother. Uh, looks like he's still alive. We can't buy the factory without his consent. What? What is this? Where's this mystery brother come from? And more to the point, where is he? What did the notary say? Nothing. I mean, nothing else. You know, sir, it's an odd town here. Everything's odd. The people, things... The situation's not straightforward. I have a small bit of research to do. Listen to me, Kate. Universal Toys is one of our biggest clients. And I don't care how weird that town is. All that matters is that you do not set foot back in New York before you've tied up the deal. Get the picture. Yes, Mr. Marson. You can count on me. I... Darn it. Yeah, Marson's kind of a jerk, but to be honest, Kate's sounding a little confused right there herself. Um, again, I just have to comment on how good this game looks. I mean, I know that's a pre-rendered background, which is why it's sharp and Kate's pixely, but... It is an absolutely gorgeous looking game. Uh, we can walk around in the graveyard, there's no need to. We can go to that door, it's locked. So we're going to go this way. Again, there's something we can do right here, but we need to do something else first. So I'm just going to head on back to the back of the church.
And I do like the music for the game, but man, does it get repetitive after a while. And okay, starting about this point, I mean, I talked about it earlier when Kate just walked into, basically broke into the Vorlberg mansion. Uh, Kate's, you know, she's a lawyer. She's here to get a paperwork signed, but she's doing the standard adventure game protagonist thing of let's just break into everything that we can see. You know, let's just break into people's houses and pick up anything that's not nailed down. Is that an automaton Christ on the cross? I don't even want to think about how that works theolo theologically, but okay. Notice how this thing has this mysterious scrape marks in the wall. Or It's kind of obvious, but yeah. It's good to have a hiding place, but not when you make it obvious that there's something hidden. And now we need to go look at this chest over here. Now, this chest is locked. I can't open it. Because there's a little keyhole right here. We need to pick up that key we just got. Now we can open these drawers. And does it not bother anyone that Kate is basically just going through... I'm going to skip the middle drawer for a minute. Just going through this priest stuff. Okay, she's an attorney, but still. Okay, we're picking up these punch cards. And we now have four punch cards. A red one, a blue one, a purple one, and a green one. Now, the middle drawer will only open... Or it opens, but it really hasn't opened it the whole way. See how there's something back there behind it? We turn this rather obvious crank there and pick up the rest of it. And it talks about how um, this is basically talking about how the priest here um, faked the death of um, Hans Wahlberg. Well, we kind of knew that it happened already because we know. Hans is still alive, even though everyone thinks he's dead, and the priest is basically saying, I'm sorry I did that, but I had no choice. But, okay. So, I guess that justifies us ripping him off here. Uh, this is door is locked. There's no point to go to it. That's one of those doors I was talking about earlier. Now let's go back up to the front and um, look at that box I passed earlier. All right. Take your time, Kate. There we go. And she has to stop before walking up the stairs. I guess that's to shift the animation. Um, this should look familiar to you. If you remember when we looked at the table back in the hotel, the one where um, Momo had been sitting at playing with those gears, it had a similar image scratched on it. We really don't need it, though. What we have to do here is we have to take these gears and put them at the right spot. Now, there's really no puzzle here because see how I got a little X mark there? it will only let me place the gear in the right place. So it's not like I've got a puzzle to solve. I just have to mechanically click things. And once I have all the gears in place, I can pull this lever. Oh, and the music stopped for a while. Hey. Like I said, it was getting repetitive. Now, if you notice, we've got a close-up of the back of an automaton here. And eggs. Hmm. Little green bird there. Okay. Let's look at this guy. He has an obvious slot in his back. Now what this 
is, is this automaton plays the church bells. Now these different punch cards play different things. Um, you can listen to them if you want. I'm just going to play the purple one. They play like Christmas music and the wedding march and all. The purple one plays a funeral church. I no longer need these punch cards. Yeah, she just ditched the rest of them out of her inventory. The punch cards that you stole from the priest bedroom, Kate. You could have at least put them back, but no, apparently she just tosses them out the window or something. Alright. Well, something just happened at the graveyard, so I guess we need to go look at that and see what's going on here. But the game looks good. Gotta give it that. Okay, this is the front of the church. The um, We can walk to this part of the graveyard over here, but there's no need to. We're just gonna go over here. Is that river in the background? Can't tell. Alright, there's the... Uh, crypt that we just saw the automaton at the top lower its hat. Alright. And the hat has in it a pretty obvious slot for a Vorlburden key. Oh look, we have a Vorlburden key. And why were you so startled right there, Kate? What were you expecting to happen? I still want to know what's going on with the back of her hair there. That, that graphical glitch bothers me for some reason. Alright, we have Anna and Hans Wahlberg's caskets here. Uh, Hans Wahlberg died in 1938, supposedly. And Anna was just entombed here. Oh, why not, Kate? We've already robbed a priest. Let's add grave robbing to our expertise levels here. Why not? Hmm. That's interesting. There's no body in here. There's a newspaper clipping from 1938 where it talks about Hans being killed. Then there's this odd cylinder. It's called a Valadoline voice cylinder. I don't know why we know to call it that, but that's what it is. Okay. And we can't even get the option to put that back, so... Okay, I guess we're done poking around in the church for a while. I will assume she's stuffed that newspaper clipping and voice cylinder under her jacket like she does with everything else she picks up. And we're done up at the church. Now we can go look at the... Um, wherever I'm going. The factory. That place. Yes. Just this church hasn't been used in a while. That graveyard's kind of overgrown. Where do they have automaton groundkeepers here? And the game wants to make sure you see all of its nice backdrops, because it makes you walk through scenes where there's nothing there except something, except the scene. You just walk through it. I mean, it looks nice and all that, but after the second or third time, it really needs a fast travel option. And I'm doing this in about the most efficient way I can think of to get through everything. Alright. 
back to the Borberg factory. Okay, this path here leads to Anna's house. We've already been there. This leads to a train station. We really don't need to worry about that yet, so I'm not going to go there quite yet. But right now, we're going to take this path. Which just leads up to this little pavilion, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. There's a lever, and this canister of something. And around here, I think flipping levers is probably a good thing. Looks like that thing was over a fire of some kind, that little metal thing underneath it. I don't know why Kate knew to do that, but she did. Um, no, right here. Is that, like, ashes under there? Did they put a fire into there and heat up whatever they just brought in? What did we just bring in? Okay. That's really all we have to do here, and it's just kind of a random thing. If you didn't... There's nothing that I ever saw that told me what I was doing there for, or why. Well, I kind of know why. It's something that shows up later. Now we need to go into the factory. This is the factory itself. See the little bird. And we've broken into everything else around here, Kate, so why don't we break into the factory bird? Oh, I guess it was unlocked. Now, there's a lot of places we can walk around in here. Um, we need to go back this way first. I'll point out that the factory is literally automated with automatons. So when they talk about how the purchase of the factory is going to save the village, did anyone work here? It looks like it's a fully automated factory. I mean, how many people are really going to lose their jobs over... I mean, look at this. How many people are really going to lose their jobs if this factory goes away and never comes back? It's a kind of a question. Okay. This is another one of those things that you sort of figure out how to make work by trial and error. There's a chain pull right here. You've heard of hamsters on a wheel before? How about a mechanical hamster on a wheel? Yeah, they're really going up on them. They're really doubling down on the... Um, Automatons here, aren't they? There's no way to put it back. I mean, how did it get in there in the first place? I don't need to do that again. Yes, we know. Now we need to pull this lever. And that actually provides power to the factory, which we're going to need in a minute. But the factory is now workable. There's some stuff up these steps. We don't need to worry about that quite yet. I'll get there in a minute. In the meantime, we're going to go over here. And, oh, it's another phone call. Yes, hello? Kate, what happened to you, my poor munchkin? I've been trying to contact you for hours. I'm in Europe, Ma. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involve your father. But uh, that's enough of that. Where are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valle de Laine. Yeah, I know. It's a bit out in the boonies. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother... Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday? Ma... 
I haven't got a lot of time, you know. Frank! Ma, please. I've got to go. Frank! Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. He is as charming as he always was. We spent the... Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back, I promise. Lots of love. Kate! You know, I think Kate is starting to get as annoyed at these constant phone calls as we are. Yes, it's spoon-feeding us the plot, and they made a point of pointing out the name Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. I am sure that won't become important at all, using the law of conservation of plot. Um, okay. The thing, remember the thing that the, got carried in by that claw from outside? It's right here. And we can do some stuff with that now. Um, what we need to do, see it's right there. Kate can't pick it up, but this thing can. Yes, they even have an automaton forklift. still don't know what that thing is, or what it does, or why it's essential to the way the factory works, but apparently it is. You turn it upside down, I guess it's some sort of chemical input? Um, I don't know, it's mixed all those pipes. And the forklift carefully moves back into place, so the pre-rendered background will stay there. Alright. Okay, we've done that, whatever that was. Now we're going to go through this somewhat hidden door back here. Not hidden in the sense that it's actually a secret door, it's just not something you can expect to see. And There's a person hanging up there. And they're looking around. Hmm. We can't interact with them. Let's try lowering that person and see what they do. Oh, many thanks indeed. I am most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh, yeah, maybe. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. Yes, we have a, com a complete true AI driven by clockwork. Well, why not? All right, this is Oscar, as he just introduced himself. Oscar will be your sidekick for most of the rest of the game. And he's one of the more entertaining sidekicks in interactive fiction, adventure gaming. Um, he's not quite a Floyd or a Crow, but, you know, he's pretty much fun. Uh, now there's a couple of things, as usual, we can talk about a lot of stuff here. Um, there's actually two things we need to essentially talk about here. And Has it been Anna. a long time since you last saw Anna Vorlberg? 72 hours, 32 minutes, and 20 seconds, to be precise. This regrettable absence explains the delay in my production process. Anna Vorlberg is dead, Mr. Oscar. What do you mean by the notion of death, Kate Walker? Broken. Disactivated. Worn out. Damaged. Unplugged. Oh, that really is most bothersome. I'd rather count it on finishing my production. Okay, so... 
he doesn't know what death is? Hmm. Okay, they did very specific programming on their automatons, I guess. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are model XZ-2003. My feet are model XZ-2005 underscore B. Be careful. The model XZ-2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card, on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. Okay, so we obviously have to get Oscar working here. Put it under your jacket, Kate. Um, nothing here else will really tell us much. Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Yes, Kate Walker. So, obviously we need to get that done. Um, we also need to find out the rest of the stuff we can about the factory here. So... That's all done up these stairs. Fortunately, we have to watch her walk all the way up. We're going to start in this office. This is Anna Wahlberg's office. And we're going to look at her desk and see what's been going on. Now, you would think you could go through this desk. Actually, you can't. There's a lot of things here you can't touch. Um, one thing we have is, remember Oscar said he was designed to drive a train? This is the train he's designed to drive. Yes, it's a clockwork automaton train. Why not? Um, we also have these letters. Now, these are dated in March, which is relatively recently, and they're two Hans. So Anna Vorlberg has been communicating with Hans for decades, apparently. And Hans has been giving her plans and designs for something. So, see, the locomotive is ready within a week. There's only Oscar left to build. And so she's been building these things to Hans' specifications. But she's gotten sick and doesn't know if she's going to finish. And, well, we know what happened there. We can also find out these things. And what we have here is that the Whirlberg factory is heavy much in debt. And they're basically saying your only hope is to buy the, take the buyout from the um, company, from your company. So that's why Universal Toy is trying to buy them out. Basically, the whole factory's in debt. Oh my gosh. Invoices, invoices, more invoices. I never knew the factory was in such a bad way financially. These last two years must have been very hard for Anna Vorlberg. Okay, and I have to ask a Again, Kate's an attorney. She's here to get the signed contract for her client, the Universal Toy Company, to buy the Vorlberg Automaton Factory. Wouldn't basic groundwork for that have involved Kate doing the research on the financial status of the Vorlberg Factory? Um, I mean, isn't that what you would do in a case like this? Is Kate literally... Did they just literally send her out just to get the paperwork? Um, is she an attorney or is she an intern? I mean, it just... Because she knows very, very little about what seems to be going on here, but they keep referring to her as an attorney. It's just kind of odd that she seems so confused about this. Anyway, this is the only other thing we can interact with in this room. You see they've got automatons everywhere. Um, there's one book here we can interact with. And it just causes this music box to spin around and play for a few seconds. 
And I'm actually locked out. I can't do anything right now. Okay. And we apparently automatically took that cylinder out. That is called the music cylinder. Well, remember that voice cylinder we found in Han's casket? Let's do something with that. And for the slow Hi. people, we Where haven't picked up. We've got to go home. We're late. Very late. Anna, over there. What do you mean, over there? Please, Hans. We've got to go. It's a secret. You've got to swear. Okay, okay. I, Anna Vorlberg, swear to my brother Hans to never, ever mention this to anyone. It's right there. You see? But it's dark in there. Don't worry, I took a lantern. From the factory. <laughs> Girls, honestly. You won't look so clever when Father notices you've stolen one of his lanterns. Oh, I'm all covered in mud because of you. Look, Anna. Look. I've seen paintings like this in a library book. They're like you swore, Anna. It's a secret between you and me. Hey, look, there's something else up there. Oh, come on. It's like a toy. I have to have it. Give me some light. But Hans, it's much too high. Do be careful, Hans. Okay, somebody created a music box of the most traumatic experience in these two people's life. Okay, uh, it's in actually none of that information is new to us. All of that we could have already picked up from Anna's diary and the various newspaper clippings and letters we found, but it the game wanted to give it to us in that order. We can take the top of that music box. Um, but, yeah, it just seems a little odd that... Alright. The last thing we need to do is go up here. This is the control panel for the entire automated factory. Now what we need to do is take Oscar's punch card and put it in here. Okay. Now we need to flip these switches. Now you notice that as I flip the switches, this one switch has got a red light on it. And that thing there lit up. That's indicating I need to push this button three times. Okay. Now I can fire this off. And we can see what this factory does. And it's like I was saying earlier, this entire factory seems to be completely automated. Did this factory even employ anyone? How would the purchase of this factory save the town? And, oh look, we've made feet. I want to know how we carved the shoes out of wood, but apparently it did that. Okay. 
Okay. Let's go get those feet and see if they're the ones Oscar wants. And it's not totally clear where they went. The feet are way over here. Right here. Yeah. They carved leather shoes and red socks out of wood. Okay. Maybe that's what was in that little cylinder we put over there. Maybe that had leather and cloth in it. I don't know. And remember, we're doing all of this because it will somehow let us get a contract signed. Okay. That's a little weird here. We only have a conversation icon for um, Oscar, but you can use the feed on it. And of course she had the Here are your jacket. feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Kate Walker, I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. Thumbs up, I guess that worked. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. You are very kind, Kate Walker. I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent. And, yeah, we're going to probably have to go find that train at some point. But, you know, this is as good a spot as any. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out shortly after this and we will catch it with Oscar in his train next time because, you know, there's going to be some weird bureaucratic hoops we're going to have to hop through at that point. And at some point we'll try and figure out how we're doing this, even though how this has anything to do with getting our paperwork signed. So anyway, until the next time, this is Dennis. I am Tanstoffel the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time as we continue with Siberia. I will see you.